So the plan on this video is to get this engine back in with some subtle modifications. So before I put the engine back in, I kind of want to just do some bog standard maintenance work. And what that entails is a lot of expensive bits. So we're going to go with a full clutch kit. Now, obviously this is a sax or sash, whatever you want to call it, however you want to pronounce it. Um, it's obviously got pressure plate, friction plate, and then in there as well is a brand new dual mass flywheel. Now, I didn't want to go single mass conversion on it because I don't like the vibrations and stuff and the noise you get on those. Um, and the, the Vapia is only running 220 horsepower. So I can get away with a good quality branded standard plate which is what I'm going to chuck back in it so that is what's going in obviously we have a new uh, one of these new bearing a release bearing um, and again reputable brand so that is that I've got a CV joint to do which is now at some point but that's probably the worst job I could ever do because I hate the grease so that's being left for last um, and then obviously the other kind of common sense thing to do so we're going to put a new kind of cam belt water pump on it and then because I'm doing that, it just makes sense to chuck a new thermostat in it. Again, the engine probably doesn't need any of this stuff, but it makes sense to do it now while it's out of the vehicle. We've got a bit of stainless as well. Some of you eagle eyed may have seen. Now that is going to be for my turbo, um, basically downpipe. So the turbo flange is 51 mil on the hybrid turbo I've got. On um, basically any of these PD ones, it's pretty much the same size. That is going to be wired to a new flange, which I'm waiting to turn up, a stainless flange, and then that gets me straight into three inch. And I'm going to do a three inch section from here, three inch downpipe, all the way through, straight through. And um, there's going to be something that resembles a DPF on there, but I can't really say much more about that. Um, so that's the exhaust side. My stainless steel's on the floor over there. And then we get onto these expensive beauties. Now, that is an expensive bit of metal. It is a Vibrotechnics engine mount. We've then got the Vibrotechnics gearbox mount again a very expensive piece of metal i think both of those are in the region of 200 pound a piece and then instead of going for the vibra technics bottom mount which is the dog bone mount this one here but obviously it would be a lot fancier we're going to run the oem one now the reason i'm doing that is quite purposely um because i don't want all the vibration through the cabin and i want somewhere to have a little flex so it's going to be better to have a little bit of flex on this bush here um, the run kind of three solid mounts and just have a horrendous car to drive. Now, I usually do it this way. This mount from Vibrotechnics isn't really that expensive. I think it's like 130 quid. Um, I say it isn't expensive. It's not expensive compared to the other two. But yeah, basically, we're going to run this one. If I do feel like I want to upgrade it at a later date, which I won't, but if I do, it's only two bolts to get that one whipped in. So that's the plan for today um, we're going to get hopefully all this kind of work done and we're going to get it back sat in in the engine bay the pd130 on these new maps so let's go off now obviously someone's moved the top cam wheel i assume to get it reading right on vcds um so basically that should be kind of centered of the marks but we're all locked off locked off on the bottom we're locked off on the top so it's now a case of just stripping all this down and replacing with new stuff
So the first bit of wiring um, is pretty simple. Had to basically get the old EECU out and take the engine loom out. So it's basically two clips and it kind of comes out. However, you'll soon realize that it's got this security case around it. Um, it's a piece of metal like that. So you can try and undo those bolts by kind of hammering and with a screwdriver, but I don't think they're gonna fully come off. So I've just cut, basically I've been really careful with the angle grinder, cut as far as I can get away with without touching the ECU. Um, you can see I very, very faintly nipped it, so I just stopped. Uh, I've done four strategic cuts, so two on the bottom and two which were across here. So these ones are easy to cut and then the bottom ones, cut them as far as you can and then get some pliers in and try and bend that off. Done that and then that's allowed me to get to the plugs which has then allowed me to remove the engine loom from this car. Now there is a plug that you will have to disconnect, it's this one here. So. Once that one's disconnected, um, we're all good to go. The loom can be taken out. So I'm going to assess kind of the wiring at a later date. But as far as I realise at this point, I only really need to know what these wires are for on this part because I don't be really planning on using any of that rest of that loom. So I'm going to pin this out or I'm going to probably check online, to be honest, because there probably will be a, a thing on Alswin, um, which you can use Alswin online or Alswin, whatever you want to call it. Um, and work out kind of what number this plug is and what kind of all these wires go to because there may be some wires I do need to connect back to this ECU but for the time being it's low to clean the engine bay to get my engine in we're going to put this back up here and we're going to get the engine back in run through the parts that I've used so far so gear selector I've used the original gear selectors in the car and um, that is a five speed one but it's long enough to reach the six speed box and it works perfectly so you just obviously do the standard thing like you would do lift the gear gator up put a like a can't remember the size of it but put a drill piece in to hold it straight and then just do the little clip thing on the front of the gearbox once you've got that in it lines everything up and then you just put the ends on so gear selector itself car side is a1 and then obviously you've got to use the bracket that comes with the gearbox um which is obviously the o2m which is out of the fabia um, and obviously the ends as well those are fabia our da11 ones might fit i just don't know where they were in the garage so i just used obviously the ones that i had at the time so that's what I need to do with that. Water pipes is a mix of both. So just literally strip off all the water pipes. Um, you need to cut a couple, but basically it's a, it's a mix between the two. I didn't need to buy anything there. Um, the brake master, so you've got a brake vacuum. Remove the Audi A1, chuck that. You don't want to use that. You want to use the Fabia one. It basically goes perfectly all the way around and allows for a boost pipe. So yeah, that's Fabia, which is the brake servo vacuum pipe. The other thing is the clutch. So you've got the clutch pipe. Now, annoyingly, I didn't keep the Fabio one. I just left that on the car. I didn't even think of that. I think that would be perfect for the conversion. So nick that if you've got a Fabia. However, I've just had to have one made. Um, I've just made it out of AN3 line, um, which is just basically braided line. The Unfortunately, the A1 one doesn't fit. So I assume the Fabio one would be perfect. Um, I just didn't have one to hand for that. Um, so that's most of the pipe work stuff done around the back. The other thing as well, um, fuel pipes, they're just temporarily on, but that's again, that's a mix between the two. I may need to buy some pipe for that, but I'll obviously report back. Uh, but yeah, more kind of onto the electric stuff now. So there's a load of wiring down here. There's also a load of wiring in the office. Um, it's not as straightforward as I thought it was going to be. So I'm kind of potentially going to have to leave the A1 ECU in, but just with one plug. Now I'll explain why. Um, it's probably only down to the ABS. So as far as I'm aware at the moment, the ABS is working with nothing kind of plugged in and just one plug on the ECU. Um, I can communicate via an OBD port and I can make the ABS um, pump run, obviously for like priming. 
So I know it kind of works at the minute. So I assume that the speedo with that in, I assume that the speedo potentially works. because I reckon that would work off the ABS. Um, could be wrong at this point because obviously I can't move the vehicle to find out. But it's kind of common sense would be that the speedo pickup would be off the um, ECU there and obviously working off the ABS. So that's going to stay in. Obviously at this stage as well, I've still got all the indicators work, the heater works, the headlights work, full beam works wiper motors work um, and if there's a radio in there I assume that would work however engine wise nothing works um, there is a crank as well it does sort of crank but it cranks weird it cranks like for a split second and stops almost like there's an immobiliser but there isn't um, so I need to look into that so it might be that I've got a hard wire basically might excite the wire separately again I'll report back on that um, and the only other thing that doesn't work at this moment in time is power steering so that's something that I may need to run a switch live to um, or I may need to control it off of the other ECU worst case if I can't get that to work it's just going to be a case of putting a mechanical pump on the engine um, and if I was going to do that what fits on one of these perfectly is a VW Lupo one so off a Lupo GTI, Lupo 1 litre, Lupo 1.4 anything that's got power steering one of those pumps will be able to bolt onto here and if you can't get it to work on your metal work that's here and um, the 1.4 has the this basically this bit that you can remove that has an alternator on it which has the same fittings on it but we'll also have the power steering pump down here so just get one for 1.4 TDI um, but yeah I, I assume I'm going to be able to get this original power steering to work but that is just a worst case scenario so I'm going to explain a bit about the wiring it is literally the worst part and I'll tell you what I'm going to be doing with it lots and lots of wires now this is all fabulous stuff no the a1 the only thing i've took out the a1 is the small kind of engine new which is this one here that's just been chucked well out of the way for the time being i don't think i need anything off of that um although i'm going to be nicking the glow plug bits because mine have broke on the fabric loom however yeah it's a bit of a pain now because obviously most of the audi works um like you've got the clocks at work um pretty much everything i just explained a second ago additionally like the fuel gauge stuff like that it kind of makes sense to just make a standalone loom for the 1.9 tdi which is obviously the fabia um now this is a bit of a pain in the backside i'm not going to lie now there's a guy online that will convert a loom for you um he's not in the uk so obviously you've got to pay import charges and stuff but it's about 400 quid um, to have someone else do it if you can't do it I would say that's a good investment personally um, however I'm just going to give it a go because I've got everything here and that's going to be my fallback option if I can't do it I'm just going to pay someone else to do it um, it is what it is it's one of them uh, but I think it's fairly straightforward it is just a bit of a nightmare and the reason I say it's straightforward but it's a nightmare it's a nightmare because of how long it takes uh, it's straightforward because basically you just cut out everything you don't need so I took the whole car loom um, out of the Fabia so if you break in a Fabia that's ideal but basically you only need most of the engine bits um, which is going to be up to kind of the plugs inside the car and then you'll need the accelerator pedal uh, which I've got somewhere I think that's in the office but yeah basically cut off everything you don't need so anything to do with you've got like um, a module that controls all your kind of electric windows airbags all that just cut that don't need that um, stuff like where it goes to the doors just chop them you don't need that and then what you do is you basically undo all the loom taking off all this kind of protective stuff and then you strip all the wires back that are cut and that'll go up to the fuse box and then you can remove those and basically you just thin down the loom that way now again it is very straightforward um, if you go online you can get most of the wiring diagrams if not you can get Alsa Win to a, a Russian website which basically gives you that it gives you all the pinouts um, the other one is auto data now auto data at the minute is what I'm using um, simply because it's a pound trial for a month so you just pay a quid um, do it but make sure you cancel before the end of the month because then they'll automatically charge you 67 pound I think it is every month for a year and you can't exit at that point um, so I'm using a bit of both but I will probably um, if it's helpful I will kind of maybe link the wiring diagrams that I've got um, or put them somewhere so some so other people can look at what I'm basically looking at but yeah it's pretty much straightforward just remove what you, you're not using um, keep what you are and then obviously if you're doing it yourself um, or even if you're paying someone else to do a loom for you you will need to then get your ECU sent away and immobilised reason being is because your immobiliser on the Fabia will run through your clocks which obviously you're not going to be using um, and also runs through kind of the ECU and stuff so if your clocks ain't connected your clocks can't talk to your ECU it, it won't fire up even if that's got a switch live going to it it just won't work it may crank or run for a split second but it'll just cut out so 
Demobilizing is 50 quid. Um, usually, again, that's just jump on eBay, find someone that does it, send it off, and it'll come back with no immobilizer on. You won't lose any kind of maps if it's been remapped. Um, I'm not going to show you really anything else because it's really boring. Um, as soon as I start making kind of the loom and have the loom out, we'll go from there. So, 